I'm at a Tesla supercharger now to talk about one of the biggest issues I have with the MG4 Trophy extended range and that is namely that the charging speed is just suboptimal. Uh, MG claims a peak charging rate of 144 kilowatts. Um, in my experience that's absolutely not attainable. And not only that, this car charges worse than the 64 kilowatt hour versions of the MG4 and worse than rivals like the ID3 um, 77 kilowatt hour. So I'm here at the Tesla Supercharger and um, I'm going to do a charging test. Just to add, um, I've had the battery preheating on for about one hour now. And that's another issue with this car. I find that the battery preheating in this car is just not capable of bringing the battery up to a temperature um, where it can reach its optimal charging rate. Um, so I'm at 15% right now and I'm going to plug in and we can see what the charging rate will be like. Um, and uh, following this test, I'm going to um, if, if the results aren't good, I'm going to contact my dealer and see whether there's any software update that can be done or whether um, this car is defective. Give MG a chance to, um, to explain what's going on here, but otherwise it's just really not good enough for a car in this price range and with this sort of battery capacity. Um, MG claims 10 to 80% in 38 minutes, which gives an average of about 82 kilowatts, which is again, even by their own figures, um, suboptimal for this category. So as you can see here, the um, battery preheating is on and has been since I started, so about one hour. Um, and uh, I'm going to plug in the car and then I'm going to um, show you guys the, um, uh, the charging rate via the telemetry from the Tesla app. So we're so just gonna plug in the Tesla charger. So I've plugged in. And then I'm going to activate the charging via the Tesla app and um, screen record the telemetry from the Tesla app uh, and uh, do a small time lapse to show you the charging rate.
So yeah, a really pleasant surprise this time. Um, it's a bit warmer today, about 12 degrees, preheated for a, about an hour. Um, the last time I tried this was about five degrees outside, again, preheated for about an hour. Um, this time uh, it got up to 133 kilowatts, which um, I think is, is acceptable given the, uh, um, the peak, which uh, is 144 according to MG. Um, <clears throat> but it only achieved that from about 17% um, up to 20 and then at 20 it dropped down to about 72 kilowatts which is really bizarre behavior before um, going up to about 80, 80 kilowatts at 30 percent then again at 40 percent going up to about 95 kilowatts and uh, holding that sort of all the way up to 50 percent before dropping down to the high 80s um, about uh, at 60 percent it dropped down again to 80 kilowatts and then um, drop down um, to about uh, 70 kilowatts by 70 percent um, and then from 70 to 80 it was only doing about 65 ish kilowatts high 60s um, before ending uh, at 80 percent about 57 kilowatts so um, yeah this time that's pretty good performance um, still nowhere near the best in class but um, it did uh, 50 kilowatt hours from 15% to 80% in uh, 37 and a half minutes. So that gives an average of 80 kilowatts. So uh, bang on what uh, MG says, you know, 10 to 80 in uh, 38 minutes. So, you know, give or take, if you extrapolate that, um, that uh, 80 kilowatt figure, it should, you know, it, it, does, it does match up pretty well. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, it did achieve what, what MG claimed and um, yeah, it's not it's not a bad performance, although it's still not best in class um, by any means, which probably goes to the uh, ID377 kilowatt because that will do uh, 180 peak and about 130 average. So I think uh, my last experience was really to do with the lower temperature and I think that the um, preheating in this car just isn't really capable of dealing with um, really low temperatures like you know below 10 degrees Celsius because last time it it uh, peaked at 107 um, kilowatts although the average was still about the same so it, it does it does appear that that peak value only really applies at a really low state of charge so probably 10 to 20 percent and then at 20 percent immediately drops off um, which is a bit of a shame. I, I do wonder if that's um, more of an uh, advertising gimmick than uh, really any usable, um, if there's any usable benefit from that 144 kilowatt peak because it happens so early on and drops off immediately. But, you know, really nice flat charging curve, average of 80. So um, yeah, it's uh, really um, nice and predictable. Um, you know, you, you'll, you'll get a nice flat charging curve pretty much any state of charge. So, you know, if you, if you uh, uh, um, come to a charger, it's sort of 30, 40%, you're going to get, you know, around 80, 90 kilowatts um, with, with the battery nice and warm. So um, not, not the best uh, road trip vehicle, but not too bad either. So that's about uh, 300 kilometers, so about 180 miles worth of range uh, topped up in 38 minutes, which um, I think it's not too bad. I mean, it works out about um, uh, just uh, about 10 minutes every 100 kilometers, so uh, 10 minutes every 60 miles of, of charging. Um, so, you know, I think if you extrapolate that, you know, you, you can do kind of longer distances. At least you're a bit more relaxed about uh, finding a charging station just because you have a much bigger battery than on the other uh, MG4 models. And uh, consumption is also pretty good, I think, even. Um, compared to the standard, um, you know, the motor in this is really efficient. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if charging speed is, is a big concern, then probably some of the rivals would, would be better, or even the 64 kilowatt hour version if you don't need the range. But um, overall, I'm, I'm quite pleased, you know, it's probably uh, quite weather dependent, which um, is a bit of a shame because this car does, does have a preheating capability, so it, it shouldn't be that... Uh, weather and temperature dependent as, as it is but 
I'm pleased to see that, that it is capable of reaching higher charging speeds.